Today's episode is brought to you by Rocket IT. Is your team still working remotely? Is it starting to look like a more permanent solution? Let us help you streamline that experience and increase productivity by creating a reliable network, increasing collaboration, and boosting security. Click the link in this video's description for more information about Rocket IT's Remote Workforce Roadmap. Hey everyone, welcome to another great episode of Thrive. I am joined today by the one and only Kim Phillips. Kim, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for being here. Awesome. Well, Kim, I I, I want to make sure that we tee this up perfectly for you to have this awesome platform to share all the services that you provide at the North Gwinnett Cooperative. You have been the executive director over there now for, oh, what, seven years? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So a lot of great work is happening. You've got a great reputation here in the Gwinnett community. Rocket IT has had the opportunity to partner with you all on a few uh, different things, just one being the Book Bag Bash that's held annually, and also just a, a canned food drive recently. And I know you guys do some other things too, so we'll get into that. You are super busy serving as the executive director of a very large cooperative in North Gwinnett. Can you tell our audience about the services and programs that the North Gwinnett Co-op provides the community? Sure. So I like to tell people that we are more than a food bank. So mm -hmm. food is absolutely our biggest wheelhouse that we, yeah. and like everybody else, COVID is taking that in a whole different direction, but we'll talk about that too in a minute. Yeah. So we do food, we do financial assistance. We do, for financial assistance, we focus on medication assistance for our seniors or our homebound mm -hmm. clients. And we also offer utility assistance. Okay. Pre-COVID, we offered tutoring. We had a computer lab. We had lots of different stuff that unfortunately mm -hmm. we've had to just put on hold. Right. But fortunately, we were able to do our big backpack. Like you mentioned, we distributed almost 900 book bags in one afternoon to children in our community. <sighs> And we were also to able, because of the community support, have an amazing holiday season. So we did over 1,400 holiday meal boxes. Wow. You know, I told my staff in September, I said, we may have already had our Christmas in March because we were so abundantly blessed with funds, with food. And, you know, I, I didn't feel certain that we would be able to, you know, sponsor as many children as we had in the past, but, mm -hmm. you know, the Lord just covered that and we sponsored over 600 kids wow. and over, almost 200 seniors for Christmas. So we've been, we've been busy. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. That's, I mean, just the numbers are, are amazing, but it also shows the need. Yeah. And I know the pandemic presented a lot of challenges just in how you guys were able to provide the community with goods and services. So tell me about that transition. What, what did that look like for you? Well, for us, we, you know, we just expanded in October of 2019. We just moved, we took, bought the building next door, took two buildings and created one building. And so we opened in October, which jump, we had jumped right into the holidays. So January, we kind of just kind of caught our breath. And then the beginning of March came and COVID. So it was really, honestly, for us, it was really fruit basket upset. So the first thing we had to do is we knew we had to focus on food. So mm -hmm. we shut down right. all services except food. Okay. We started letting people in very slowly, like one at a time that was just taking too long. And so, and the need was so much that it, it just, it wasn't working well. So we moved to a complete drive-through system mm -hmm. for our food. We shut down our thrift store. Our thrift store renovations were supposed to start in May. We had to put that okay. on hold. So we did drive-through for our families from March until August. And mm -hmm. each family was coming twice a month and getting about 75 to 90 pounds of food in each visit. Oh, wow. One of the blessings, you know, I, I tell people that with all the challenges that we faced in with COVID and through COVID, and as we still continue to, everybody's navigating their way through it, God right. has continually stepped in front of that challenge and gave us abundant blessings. So one of the biggest things was this, our building and yeah. 
I, you know, when we did it in October, never would have thought about COVID. And Mm -hmm. so our lobby was no longer our lobby. It was a staging area. Our Mm -hmm. education room was where we could spread out and our volunteers could eat lunch. And now our education room is a holding place for some extra food. Mm -hmm. Our computer lab became our book bag storage area. So we just, and then our Christmas area. And it just, you know, it's just everything is not what it seemed, (laughs) not what it seemed like it would be. And then with our average before COVID, my average volunteer's age was about 70 to 72. Mm -hmm. So when COVID was here, we had to say lovingly, you know, don't come. We want to make sure that you're safe. But the blessing in that was I had a lot of people who were working from home that could get away for the day. And I had a lot of access to a lot of high school students, especially young backs that could lift and move heavy boxes. So we would do big distributions and then have another group of volunteers come in after we close to pack boxes and get ready for the next day. And the community was just beyond amazing with bringing us food, responding to social media updates about what we needed. And so that's been, that's been a blessing in itself. We, in May, we started doing financial assistance. We were blessed with several grants to help us with that. Wow. And I'm very proud to say that from May to December, we distributed almost $600,000 in assistance maintaining that maintained people in their homes or utilities. So that stability for families is, is a critical component to the education factor for children. We paid a lot of internet bills, which we probably wouldn't have paid in the past, but there were so many kids doing digital learning. We wanted to make sure that they had access to internet. So just again, blessing after blessing. The biggest challenge for us was our seniors that we serve. Mm -hmm. We, you know, they were afraid, rightfully so, and didn't want to come out. So what we did is we called most of our seniors and said, don't worry, we're going to just bring it to you. So we just kind of developed on the fly this home delivery system. So we call our, we were doing it twice a month. We've backed down now to once a month, but we would call them twice a month and get specific orders, you know, to the point where do you want creamy or crunchy peanut butter? Do you want strawberry or grape? Is there anything that you need that I don't have that I can get at the grocery store for you? Is there medicine that I can go pick up for you? And so we just, again, the challenge in that is that we had the blessing in that rather is that we had volunteers, you know, saying, okay, I'll take it. I'll come. And so they would, you know, have little teams of folks come on Saturdays and they would go and do deliveries. We were doing deliveries to about 200 seniors. Wow. In our community. And so that's just a program that is probably never going to go away now because it's been so helpful for, for our families and our homebound clients. Absolutely. So that's part of our schedule now is doing deliveries yeah. now once once a month. Yeah, well, and, and you're meeting people where they are. And, and I think that's huge, especially right now. And and I also love Neighbors Helping Neighbors. And, and I know the North Gwinnett Co-op is located in Buford. So your your area that you serve, what, what are those what are those cities that you currently are, are serving? We serve Buford, Sugar Hill, Swanee. Mm-hmm. And we also serve the Gwinnett County portions of Auburn, Braselton, and Hushton. Gotcha. Okay. Good to know. I think that'll be helpful for our audience. Well, Kim, this has been a great conversation, and I want to make sure we're not missing an opportunity to talk a little bit about, you know, and you've touched on this already, but moving moving forward today, tomorrow, you know, how can individuals local businesses, how, how can we get involved with the North Gwinnett Co-op? What are those opportunities? Well, there's, you know, there's still a little bit limited because of COVID. So we don't have right. the, the numbers of people that we did in the building, but there's still lots mm-hmm. of ways that people can help us. So food drives is a big component. Mm-hmm. We do have a current needs list on our website. I really tell Wonderful. folks to focus on the things that aren't necessarily food, the personal care items. A lot of people don't mm-hmm. know that food stamps does not pay for toilet paper. It doesn't pay for laundry detergent. It doesn't pay okay. for shampoo. And so those things we give out pretty much to every family that comes through. So like as of right now, I've got four bottles of laundry detergent on the shelf. We served about 40 families last night. And so Wednesday or 
you know, tomorrow we'll serve probably about 50 families. And so I only have four bottles of laundry detergent. So wow, those are things that are cash out of our family's pockets. And so that's gotcha. why we really push people to get the personal care items or the household items. So like just recently we did a low pantry alert for the laundry detergent on our social media. Okay. So that's a great way. We also, you know, we're starting to bring back teams of like 10. And so we're going to, we're working to get our volunteer page back up and active in March. So greatly that'll offer some opportunities for people. And then we, I'm proud to say through Gwinnett County, we received a grant that enabled us to buy a mobile food pantry. So we're oh, super, yeah. super excited about that. We have a refrigerated one and a non-refrigerated truck that will enable us to pick up meats. But the really the goal for the mobile pantry is to take those into the communities where transportation is an issue. Yes. And do distributions in some local churches in their parking lot. So there will be opportunities for teams to help us with that as we kick forward. And also for our, specifically for our seniors, we have a program that's kicking off in March and it's called the Somebody and it's Buddy, B-U-D-D-Y, because a lot of our seniors don't have somebody. And yeah. so when we go, yes, and we go to visit them, it's like our volunteers that'll go, it's sometimes it's a 20 minute visit, just dropping off the groceries. And so this is an opportunity to pair a volunteer with a specific senior and that that person builds that connection with that person. And so they have a somebody because like, I didn't realize it, but I was emergency contact for one of my seniors. And, and so he got pretty sick. And so I was the one that ended up taking him to urgent care. And so it's like, and that's kind of where the program came from. It was like, I could never leave my granddad and not, not care that he was there. And I just, I have a real big passion for my seniors because I just see so many of them alone and especially through COVID has been very hard on them. So we're really looking to connect them with somebody. So there'll be information coming out about that soon too. Oh my gosh, Kim, you've got great things going on. This is Yeah, we're excited. Definitely, definitely. Well, and we'll make sure that we put a link to your website so that if people want to get in touch with you, there's that link there for that. And also that current needs list. I know you guys are awesome about keeping that up to date. And then as these programs start, you know, having spots for people to come and and volunteer and partner with y'all, we'll make sure that, you know, people have a way to get in touch that way as well. So Kim, thank you so much for sharing all this great information with us today. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Absolutely. All right. Well, everybody, thanks so much for tuning in to Thrive. And until next time, stay tuned for more great content, but definitely look up the North Gwinnett Co-op, you guys. 